Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, Zero to Hero session number. I don't know what the session number is, but this is the last session, last session of Zero to Hero. Uh, I'm the guest host here today uh, because Victor is uh, traveling uh, to Mexico. He's helping uh, kids out in Mexico. So I'm here to introduce uh, none other than a superhero, Jonas Rapp. He's here to show us, uh, talk to us about XR, Fetch XRM Builder. So Jonas, over to you. Thank you. And uh, it's, good, it's good to be back and to be uh, here on this last. Uh, I will try to share my screen now and we hope it works. So I hope you see my screen and so on, right? And yes. that you scream, you see me in some corner as well. And then let's uh, start doing the presentation. Let me just get you, I want to show all the people. So I have that window up here as well. Have it on side. So when I'm looking like this, then I'm looking at you guys. Um, so let's go here. Fetch XML Builder. I will take you from zero to hero. I hope maybe someone every well, we'll see. Um, and to start with just short saying hi about me. I'm a coder. I've been for like 25 years or maybe more. And that's what it, that's what's funny. And of course, I'm also lazy. I'm very lazy when doing my coding and when just doing my work and which means I create tools. I create a lot of, oh yeah, I think a lot of tools, and some are uh, are known by many people. Some are only known by myself to make it easier to do my work at least. So this is why I create tools. Um, also became an MVP because I think many people liked some of my tools, and I do a bit else also. I like to share and to like let you know how to to know how to work when you're lazy so basically now right now i'm also also in a pause because i'm not working right now i've been off for more than a year and this is actually the first time i'm getting back to to the techie area where i'll i'll start um, to do this and get him back. I won't talk about what happened last year, but I've been off for a long time. And of course, you can find me on Twitter and everything else, uh, of course. But where you're not here because of me, so let's move on, please. And I love if you, I can get some feedback from my speaking here, but it's a bit hard for me to listen to what you do because of, well, the problem I've had for the last year. So I like to respond for you to respond anyway. And you, you, you use the reactions in Teams. We're using Teams. So you find this on top right or wherever I point. Um, so you can probably say hi and you do that. I just, I'm going to see here if something happens. Oh, I see a bit of love. And stuff. So give me a Thumb up, thumbs up if uh, you agree, or if you say, hmm, that's very good, or maybe the surprise if, uh, what the hell is this, and whatever you want to do. But it just get me something back, so it's so I know that you are alive, please. Um, if you all want to ask me something, I would suggest you send me an email. And if you have some question about how Fetch, Fetch XML Builder is working, send me an email and I promise I will respond to you there as well. And because I talk a bit bad and I listen and even worse. So that's why I ask you for you to email me instead. Um, and anyway, anyway, I will fill one hour anyway. So you don't need to ask during this time. Uh, what's my, my agenda? It's well, very simple. We started with an extremely intro to XRM Toolbox because I think you've all heard of XRM Toolbox. Thumbs up. Oh, OK. Um, then we start to fetch XRM Builder. What is that and why is that? I mean, do we need it? And then started 
actually using it as well. You do a really simple query and make it more advanced to, to create like link entity. So you join, but with the outer uh, joins, which is not possible from the UI, uh, etc. We can do more things. And then what can we do more with the with the queries that we have created? We have we have built a good query. Okay, what can we use it with that even more? We can use it in Flow, we can use it in JavaScript, C Sharp, and SQL, or whatever. No, not whatever, but a lot of things. And then you probably need to do this to see there's so someone sitting in there. Uh, unknown settings. How, how can you use the settings of Fetch XML Builder to, to make it work more like you need it right now? Um, and of course, a really, really big thank you to Tangito Saad because he created, well, he saves my ass today and tomorrow and yesterday and well, all days. Uh, so the XM toolbox is um, his hero. He's a hero. He actually started the XM toolbox in 2012. So like 10 years ago, he had a bunch of tools and then he made it uh, a bit better by creating uh, the XM toolbox to add the tools that he has in the box. That's a lot better. And then about four years later, he changed something on, uh, because other people want to create and build new tools. So he said, we can distribute these through Nugget, make it so easy for everyone. We don't have to have our own website and download it from there and so. So just put it on Nugget and their name, they are then available in the external toolbox. And uh, this year, well, right now, well, today I counted was 297 tools that are like public tools that have been sort of, have been, they they have done some tests and they are good enough to be out there. So like say, almost 300 tools and they've been made for like 150 different developers. That's pretty cool. It's, I think it's it's a bit crazy. And of course, read him through XRM Toolbox on Twitter and on the website. You can actually, if you go to the website, there's a link to a report. He has been use, using Power BI to sort of see how much he's using. And it actually says now it's using by like 450 different tools, which means they have people out there in this world, they have their internally tools that are like 150,000, 150, think 150 things. Wow, great. So it's a pretty awesome thing. And just short, well, I don't have to say much, but there was something I said like five, six years ago. I, I had a presentation about this and I just said, if you're not working with XM Toolbox, you're working too hard. And basically that's all I need to say right now. But um, yeah, that's the intro for XM Toolbox. What about Fetch XML Builder? You know, Fetch, X, Fetch XML, it's so hard to say that. Maybe it's easier with FXB. Well, maybe not. Well, um, that's a name. I'm sorry, we have to live with it and you cannot change it now. I started, of course, when I started in the dynamics area, I that was like 2009. We were, of course, working with the Stunware tools. I think you all who have been in this area from that long back, we all used Stunware tools. And they had also a Fetch XML uh, tool to, do, to work with that. It was lovely, but then when the CRM 2013 came, then they changed the SDK too much. So they had to redo the sun, uh, the stunware. Uh, they didn't anymore. So it died right there. So I'm thinking, okay, advanced find. Yeah, that's pretty good, but there's a lot you cannot do in that way when you're using the, the UI in dynamics. So I started thinking about, hmm, can I create a new tool? So I'm starting to work on this and 
see okay if i do this i could probably add something to it as well i want the first thing i want was the not in because you you may want to ask this question when you when you have queries for the database you mean it's supported by fetch xml but it's not supported by the ui i have so and that and all, also the aggregate if you want to count and so on it's not possible in the ui it's still not but it's possible it's supported by the fetch xml and so basically I was thinking the tool should be able to create any query and you can either have some help with the with the with the tool and you can just write your you could use notepad or whatever and it should be possible to ask this in some way so when you can do that you think maha i have a really query now then i can say i want code from that which is since i'm a coder i want to give give more help that way and also after a few years i started with the if you're using with power automate flow then it's possible the you need it's kind of hard to enter to that today to sort of manually type the words you shouldn't, you shouldn't have in the flow you can use the tool now to get it for flow. I think that's a really popular feature of my tool. And also it can create a SQL and so on, so on. Um, but the fetch XML, the, that's how that works. It, well, it's XML and it's for fetch. So it's very easy. You understand why it's called that. And this tool is also very close to a raw fetch XML. It means it's still called, it's called entity. It's not called table. It's called attribute. It's not called column. I mean, in the UI today, it's been changed to table and column and so on, but we step close to the core of the fetch XML. So that's why it's still called entity and attribute. I'm thinking maybe we should have a switch in the tool so you can say, okay, the switch says, put on the so user area the names but uh, we'll we'll see if it, that happens anyway um so um i don't want to talk a lot and show uh, powerpoint because that's boring i want to do it live instead but what what is going to happen well we install it we connect it we run it and we have a query properly and then whoa <laughs> Fetch XML Builder. And okay, Victor has told me that he loves this uh, PowerPoint and with the uh, funny slides. So he'll get, you'll get these. You want to see Fetch XML? Yes. And yes, we want to see it. Oh, absolutely. And we are a supporter of Fetch XML Builder. Now, okay, I hate PowerPoint. So let's just. Click the X, I'm not getting back there. So now it's live. Now this is, um, you can see my desk and we see fetch XML bit. Now we see extreme to extreme toolbox up there. It's all been pinned to the taskbar. Of course, you all say yes, yes, uh, because you're always using it. So why find it hard to find it there? So I started and it may, take a few seconds or a few more because it's loading a lot of things, basically many tools that we get there for free actually. So it takes a bit of time to open here. And what we do there, we can look as we have a start page and all the tools that we have right now. What do you do first? You connect. You connect to a good environment. environment. And uh, well, here have I have a bunch of uh, Different. Well, these are my 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 things that I that I work with, and we can see this. I have a file there that's called wrap stuff. Then I have a CRMK products. I have customers. I have a demo. I don't have the default. Do you have that? You have default here, and you just put your connections here. Wrong. 
don't do that. This, this, I don't know what I should say, but something from the re reactions there. Don't do that, but start be smart of these files that you have. And of course, I these files I'm saving in my OneDrive. Of course not. Of course I do, because otherwise, it, when you want to update something, when you want to uninstall, reinstall, when you get a new computer, you lose all your uh, connections. So do like this. You can just Google, uh, I mean, Bing, of course, you Bing for YouTube and the external toolbox and uh, like the connection. Then you'll find me. It's a really short video. Though. There's like five minutes. Uh, do it and do right. OK, so I connect now to John Sharp space. And it eh, takes a few seconds as well. And now I am connected and I uh, want to start with the fetch XML, fetch XML, ooh, fetch XML builder test. There's an update. This is a, I'm ex actually have doing a session right now. No, thanks. That's wrong. I don't say the, the X up there. I always update because I don't want to have the, the older bugs. I want to have the new, the correct. So you always do that. You may have to restart XRM toolbox. Okay, it's worth with a few seconds. Do it every time, oh, please. Now we're, when we're waiting, say yes. Yes, thank you. And now I can start uh, this again. It's been updated. Now how there's no bug. Well, <laughs> there are a few bugs, but um, the old one are lost at least. Um, I will start with this also through the start page it, because that's the easiest way to sort of f fast find the tool that one use and the actually the environment to be connected to. So I connect to that er, to that um, environment and this. And since it's just updated, this is why I say, aha, now this is fixed and that, ooh, this is great. Yes. This is uh, this is probably love on the reaction there. Um, okay, so when started, we go, we're starting really from the beginning, and most of you will just oh, this is boring. We know that already, but we're getting a bit more advanced places as well. Um, to the left here, I hope you can see. If you don't, do a unmute and say we don't see, and I will uh, zoom or something. Um, we we can see. That's good. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, to the left here, this is Query Builder. That's sort of the core in this tool. So, I mean, since I said that fetch XML, it's XML, then you know it's some kind of tree, tree view with these things. So you have this, and it should represent the fetch XML, but you don't have to see it all the all the kind of um, Text there, there you can see it right here. So uh, you select with with uh, uh, node you're on, and you can right click and uh, add and remove and so on for, on it as well. And you can also do it right here on on the quick actions. So it's like either right click or click it here. I I do this, but it's, do what you like. Um. The first one is always uh, the node that's called fetch. And uh, this has well, a lot of things to learn from this. And as you can see, why, why, what is late matter? I can't even ex uh, I can't even say it, but I can click this link and I'll say, ah, this is the docs from Microsoft that says everything about how this is used. So it's pretty good that in most places, there is something that we need to read it to understand it, if you don't read, already know it. But you can find it like all over here. Um, I'll start to actually make a super simple uh, query here. So let's start right entity name. Account, of course, that's the normal thing. You see, execute has also F5. Which is something I always I don't like mouse mouse I like uh, keyboard so I if I don't if you don't see what I'm doing that's because I'm just using the F5 instead. Doing this 
will show me all the results here. And we know that we see a lot of things that are not really interesting because we haven't select any attributes. We want to do that, of course. So when we add that, we can see here and just start writing the name. OK, name. And when, oh, there are dead F5. It just it, so it goes all the ways of, of like for <laughs> always do it anyway. And so now we have just a list of the name of the name of the account in this here. Um, when we when we create more nodes in the tree view here, we have to if I now have selected the entity, then I can add what can I add under that. Um, we add, added something feature quite recently is that you can also add another so it's like plus if you have created an attribute you can very easily create another one as well that's it makes it makes a few minute milliseconds and i want uh, account name number and i want to primary contact like this to see a bit more there and we should probably have an order as well. So from the entity, I can always add an entity as well, an order. So I have to say order by what? Well, order by the name. And now, well, this is um, the names and the, the primary contact ID. Um, but I asked for three. Why is it two? Well, because this is very near the core of FetchXML. And if FetchXML wants to return information about these attributes that I'm saying, well, it, if this is null on each record, well, then this, um, this attribute will not be seen in the result as well. You can actually add it to as well, because there is some way to say what should we actually show here. And in this case, I can say show me columns with uh, without a value. So now I have a uh, count number if there is no data. And another thing, if, if we look at more about the columns, we have uh, like a number. Well, it's very easy to see they have 11, no, 12, <laughs> 12 uh, uh, counts. And also the primary, primary key. This is the GUID, like the ID of the record here. Um, if you have added the, the ID attribute, explicit, explicitly said that you want account ID, then you can, can remove it like this, but uh, it can be shown anyway like this. Uh, another thing here is that these are GUIDs that's kind of boring to look at. So you can also change how they are appearance. You can say, give me friendly names of uh, what we see now, which means it will change the the name of the, of the column, no, of the, well, uh, what the attribute is called here, and also the name. So now we don't see GUID, but we see the value of the primary uh, attribute on that entity. Okay, so that's a very simple, uh, the very first simple query. And um, what do we do to make it a little bit more is that we can have add a link entity, which means if you know SQL, then we have a join. Um, and in this one, you can either enter, okay, we should have a join or link entity to another entity and say how they are connected from which and from which attribute to uh, another attribute and sort of say, how do you find these? But it's a lot easier to just show an, existing relationship so then it will it will 
add all this information. So let's see if we can find the uh, rockets here. So we can set from account ID to the manufacturer on the rocket. So I add this and then I see entity wrap uh, uh, rocket and, and then the different uh, attributes are there. Then I say execute to see what you have done. Okay, now we don't have 12 counts lying anymore. We have 11, but we have actually two of this uh, and account and we have five accounts of NASA. So the, it's really easy to see why, but because we have a link type. That is that also means it's an inner. If you know join, it's inner it means that don't show the accounts that have a rocket in this case. So what we can do to see all accounts uh, and uh, and then um, information about the rocket if we say outer join there. So run it again and then we see okay there are 12 here and some are more than one and I don't don't know why so I have to add the attributes for the rocket to actually show some information there and I know wrap name that's just the name of uh, of this and then I see now all information I need here so I have a discovery and we have Apollo 12 and so on on NASA and, and so on. And for companies that, or <laughs> accounts that don't have any rockets, well, they are still rock or they're still accounts. So they're shown here as well. Um, now we're gonna show something a little bit changed. So, to get this, I don't want to. I want to keep this query I have right here, but I don't want to start from scratch. So the way what I will do then is, I I can call it just new. Well, then I have to start from scratch. So instead, I do I click sort of the the arrow down and select. Oh, I want a clone of the query, and put that in a new tab. I can do it in the, this one as well, which is a take this query and in a new tab when also get the possibility to connect to another um, environment. Let's just do this. So basically it's exactly the same thing, but now I want to take this further. Let's make, sorry, make this an um, aggregate. So we, instead of just showing all the records here, I just want to say, okay, on NASA, I just want the number five. So to let me see that NASA has created five rockets. Okay. Let's see here. This is where we have the aggregate. When we do this, it's also, maybe you're, this is kind of scary because when I click this, oh, I get all these warnings. What, what are we missing? What are we doing wrong? Well, you can get some help here. Um, because for name or actually for every attribute that's uh, added, that's in this query, we'll have to give, give an alias. Why? <laughs> Ask fetch XML the, and the guys at Microsoft. So we have to do that. And then the account name, I'll just call this account. So it has an, an alias for that. And account number is not really interesting. Interesting, We know it's empty. So maybe I'll be used it in the future. So I will do comment. So <clears throat> the thing is still here, but it's commented. So like this, you see the two slash like this will show you that it's gone. And you can do this here as well. And it's like, I like to use the keyboard. I don't like to use the mouse. As you see here, comment, control K, uh, of course. Uh, and it's now gone there. So, so I have this, uh, it should be here as well. We should also say when we do an aggregate, aggregate we should e either say it's count by or it's an aggregate. So how do we count? Uh, this one is, of course, grouped by, 
and then the the rocket name is something that we will count. So alias call alias count and then say here that let's count this. OK, now this looks good, so we run it. Oh, it says something about order clause. OK, something in here, the order. OK, they need an alias too, because so you are saying that now it's the alias that you want to order, order by. So I can do this. Uh, now it should be good. And oh, there's something wrong again. OK. Then I want to see here. It seems like this is disabled, but it says name because I and I added name earlier. So how can I remove remove it? This is when I take it new level. Uh, I will look at the fetch XML. And when we look at this here, we can also see the the comments in the in the query. So but this is the problem here. OK, I could be possible to remove these. Yeah, you know what we do first? I'll try to run this once more. And now we get this error message. And this is actually when you are not a user of a fetch XML builder, but you actually you help us all. Because if you on the if you click show the details, I can see a lot of these details there. You don't have to understand or you don't have to read, but there's a, a, a button here that says create issue. What does that do? Well, it creates a new issue on my GitHub. So you can create something blah, blah, blah about the, um, the, the, query, the query, query I have. And then you can just take this top, this uh, part in the beginning there. You can say blah, 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 this is it, it all, and so on. And then there's more information here. So it's a, let's, let's put the preview instead so you'll see it better. The, you can see here, this is the detail of all the error that happened. And down here is the query that uh, I was working with. And this is like the versions and so on. This is awesome. If you do this, then I will be so happy to get this errors. <laughs> I want to know errors. Um, and if you do this, it be a, you please help some you will help me so much okay anyway how to change this if i just uh, start uh, uh, changing this i'll remove this and then i can click okay or i can do this and click this small little live update query which means if i write something here it will actually update the Query builder over here. So now we see this. I hope it works now. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we have created an aggregation uh, query, and uh, then we can sort of change how it's sorted and a lot to do. But you see the so like the picture pictures of it. Um. Okay. So let's go to uh, new again. <clears throat> I want to open something from the from the the environment we have, and I mean to open something, we can open a file and find something. Oh, here's uh, something we can do again. Then, if you have queries on your disk, but you usually don't have what's most usual uh, express except for me i use the open view it's a good start if i want to just like change the, the queries i get then it it's a good start to do it from there so so i uh, will uh, look for account and of course there are, these are system views that you have first and then if you have any personal views, you can see them there as well. And I will get this accounts and uh, cities. And here you see the 
like a preview of the actual query. Um, first, the first thing I see is, oh, there's a warning here about entity image. Well, that's something when you create views in uh, Dynamics, they add uh, image if if they have uh, that on the entity. So if we just uh, execute this, we'll see something very boring. I don't want this. So okay, when I'm working here again, comment get it out of here. So I see this. Uh, of course, I will also show uh, friendly names so I see what's talk it's it's talking talking about. Also, I have here account. Uh, which is account ID. This is the GUID and uh, that's actually added to the view we have. So we will see it anyway. Um, okay, so this shows currently accounts that have a city. Let me comment this away as well. So show you me all accounts. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? Well, I want to, this to be a good demo. And if I want to have a good demo, I want them to have some city on the on the records here. So what do I do then? Find a new tool. I will go on to Bulk Data Updater to make sure how we can add city if you don't have if you don't have any. So it will take the query where we're using in Fetch XML Builder. It's now using that in Data Bulk, bulk Updater. Um, and we can also select here if we only update the selected, the selected rows or this is, for this one, it will do it on uh, everything. Then, of course, you can select uh, what you want to update. And you can set something and you can say a city but that will be boring because then all cities will or all accounts will be in that city. Don't want to do that. But I want to try instead to do a cal calculate. What is that? Well, that's something uh, strange, yeah, like curly, curly things around. Um, you could do this if you say name. I see this, it, uh, the preview here is NASA and it's uh, RAP solutions and so, and so on. Um, it could be a bit more harder to do this. Uh, so we'll use a third tool. So the XRM uh, tokens runner will actually help you on how to build this. And yes, this is like, I'm um, like, on the TV and um, creating uh, something new, new food. But uh, let me show you what this is. So you can just use this to select which entity, which uh, column and so on, and uh, add these and see, okay, well, what will it be? It will be SpaceX if I have name and so on. And I, I can make, will not put, much more time into this. You can go to these documentations and uh, there you'll read about this. And in this case, I have, let, uh, let's just uh, read this text a bit if you like this <laughs> or not. I like it anyway. Okay, so if the city is not equal, not equal to empty, well, then uh, take the city already. But if it's not, which means if it's empty, then check if the the contact is not empty. Then write town of the last the last name. Otherwise, nowhere. Get it? No. Anyway, I send this back to Bolt Data Updater, and I see there's a lot here. And for uh, Elon Musk, the, he will be in town Musk. And uh, yeah, it, it works for all these. So I can just say add this attribute and uh, update all of them. It will take one second or three, but uh, then we'll see what is, uh, come on, it's a bit too slow. 
maybe it is time for me to group. Okay. So now it should be there as well. So now I'm in here and I say run it again. And I see there's some kind of city for everyone. If I had no good information put there, then I just say nowhere. Um, so, well, this is a way of that tells you how to work between different tools that they have in XRM toolbox. Um, this may not be the best uh, demo I showed you, but it's interesting to see what you can actually do, do there. Um, now, let me just close a few here and go back to the beginning. And moving on, we're going to look at one of the options, select entities attributes. But that is showing you can enter these um, properties of the metadata for the entities and for the attributes. So we can do this. Most of these say just like a square there. That this means not either, not or. So they, they'll take everything. Uh, there are a few that I think for default, it should be in uh, this value. So not, not logical means it does it does not include entities that are not really entities because they're not in the database but they will be when they're returned from the SDK um so this is something to be used to to make it really easy more easier to to find what we're working with right now so I, I can also place preview here. Now I see right now it previews which entities we show and currently 473 entities. If I select this only unmanaged because this is my dev environment, I want to just see the the entities that I'm actually working with. Then I see, OK, I got six entities for for there. So that makes it easier and if i even have this and it will all only show custom mm -hmm. uh, attributes as well so i can do this and then you will actually see here i have the entity and it says warning well it says it's not valid it is valid i think then the name there should be changed it's just it's not being shown right now so let me do a, a new query from this and then i see here that it's really easy. okay i find a rocket and i want to select entities now i'm going to select entities um sorry going to select attributes in a new way because earlier i've only clicked add attribute like this we can do the select entities and then you get kind of a, a form where you can select which ones you want here and that makes it a lot easier as well and you can actually say show metadata it will show which type it is and some common uh, um, metadata there as well and if you if you select one of these attributes you can see all details here I mean all information you can see and this is actually uh, something that's used from the uh, from Tangi who had the metadata browser. So it's actually using within that tool, and it's it's kind of, kind of crazy how it works. But uh, I think that's very nice. It's easier to make it and so on. So okay, here are some uh, the name and the gadgets from uh, the from the rockets. Um, so let's move to the the next uh, um, dialog here is settings. Uh, it started the most common and it's uh, very common because you have you can use it with the control F as well. If I just cancel here, do a control F. I don't see it, but I don't know. I'm clicking here. Uh, it will show if friendly names, not only for the 
uh, not only for the this uh, query builder, but uh, but in the fetch XML, of course, it's using the logical names and so on. Uh, but depends on in how you're working with it and uh, how much and so on. Uh, this is this is very common to switch back and forth. Uh, other than these, well, should we have a, a double or a single uh, things uh, in the fetch XML? Should we work? Can we look up uh, look up on the records or just show grids and so on? There's actually something here. I'm just most showing you this so you can start look around and see what you can change in your in your uh, tool. Actually, this one, I always unclick this because otherwise if you change something and you want to like close uh, fetch XML, uh, XML toolbox or maybe the whole extreme toolbox, <laughs> then it will say, oh, you want to save this file? I don't want to save this file. But um, anyway, and I uncheck this as well because I want to show error warnings. Maybe I'm not interesting to see like on this like, like information, like the the result view. Uh, having a view is uh, the normal thing to use in this, and you can have also like a, this is very raw. So if you have this, the raw result, that's actually what's being re returned from the SDK. Um, and the others are XML and JSON, a bit different formats. Um, return all, retrieve all pages that if you have a lot of data and you check this, it can take data. Otherwise, it's like by default, just take 5,000 and you have to sort of get next page. If you check it in, it will go on until it's done. And also, let's check, check this one, always uh, open results in a new window. Uh, that's all we need to show here. And let me just show you. I have, this is uh, when I present, when I make an execute, I see uh -huh, this is the result. And if I add a filter here, or actually when I create a filter, it will always create a condition because you need a condition. And you say that uh, number or, uh, okay, this is a, that is a bad exam example. Um, Okay, I'm sorry. Shouldn't do that. Let's remove this. So if I ask this question again, then it will create a a new view with uh, with the result. So I have now got the result two and I had the result one, and then I can sort of compare if uh, any changes had been there. And so what may be good for some uh, for some reasons, not for me right now, but you can do that. And then it's getting close to the end there near here, but we're talking about repositories. Have you used it? Well, most say no, what's that? And this is something where we have a repository of a number of queries. So it's, I can say this, this is my, my rocket. <clears throat> I can say it just like rocket number one, like this. Okay, why did I do that? Well, it's it's stored in within my fetchml fetchml builder. So now I can see it here. If I change something, I remove that and so on, and then I can get it back by doing this. Then I get in there, and also. There's, it can be exported. So I can export it. These I have in my repository. I can send it to my colleague and import that. And then it can, can uh, get a bunch of, uh, of queries that you want to work with. And I, I can actually say import 
and uh, then uh, okay let's get this uh, great uh, repo what's i don't know what's in it but we see now that we have something new here okay i got some a demo with the really funny uh, ones here um and finally almost let's see depends on time we want to look in the view why is that because it's a big thing um we know that we can see the the query builder which is like how do we build them and we can see the fetch xml there this is one view there are other views of this as well and uh, there's one actually that's the the metadata we have this if we okay for some reason it doesn't work right now demo um and uh, you can also see the uh, the sql so the, in this case it's it's um, made an um, sql from from within the tool you can also change the um, the settings here and say no no i'm using the sql for cds you know what mark uh, created he's a lot better at uh, sql so it's can use that the way and how, what more can you see we have this uh, power rate. ah this was a too complicated uh, query for this never mind what you've probably seen this you can get all the the parameters for the for the flow on how to get uh, data from CRM there um, and you have uh, OData this is it's actually used the same way as the getting in for flow and uh, that's the same this doesn't work either um, if we move on to quite uh, query expression expression I'm using that a lot because I, I'm a code guy, so it means I I work with C sharp, and I, then I get all this, and I can just copy it all and then start to add it to my code, and then well, maybe change things after and so on. But yeah, I can do it that way. What is really, it, I think it's strange that it's in there. You can parse. So if you have code, you can sort of copy your C sharp, and add it here and then parse which means it go in and back and forth between fetch xml and query expression i don't know i have no idea how it works because it was added by uh, someone out there who wanted uh, uh, a feature to uh, to this tool and then finally just some show more simple in c sharp and even javascript as well and um, and when you have like a gazillion of different uh, views here we do reset from the beginning so we have actually a bit more to do that's great because i want to show you something else let's let's make a really hard linkedin and uh, why we should do use that well let me see okay start from the beginning i want to have a context and the cities of course contact and i don't see that oh right i had the selection or, or the select of which one to show show that one and also show this one this one the logical uh, on attributes is what removes the uh, address fields these are i mean the the address attributes are not really oops there's sometimes ex, uh, the fat, the external toolbox crashes anyway uh, the the attributes the address attributes they are not really in the database, but they are like, like I said before, they are added in, well, somewhere around the, the SDK. 
So that's why they were not shown there. Uh, let me see if it remembers what I said. Yeah. This one as well. OK, so I should do this. Contact. Contact. Good. And then I want to have the areas here. I want city and I want the name. Take a full name. You see how I easy I find the, the attributes? Very easy. Uh, like this. So, OK, I have the name up with that and the city is the world. OK, here's another the attributes, another column. Why is that? Well, it was added by the SDK. So, OK, don't add system added. Just show me the city and the name. It's good. And let's just order by the name as well. Let's put the full name. There we go. OK. Now I want to make a link entity to the account. Uh, let's put it up there. If I put it to the account, we have parent uh, customer, just like this. And I will say I'm I'm on the work. Running this, uh, they removed a few of uh, the. We shouldn't have this. The new the new view that looks crazy um because i have a, a default link type let's put it outer instead and run it again okay some are have a different uh, different um accounts um let's also add the account name so we see what we're talking about. There it is. And let me remove that column. So we see some people have work at some places here. Now it gets funny because we'll make another link entity to the account. Now, we'll actually, since I'm doing that, I um, did a control F to actually see the logical names. I will make another to account. And I want to add. The address. Ah, I want to. I want to join right based on the city. So okay, show for all, for all compats compats show you also a city or an account in the same city. You cannot do that in in the UI from Microsoft. Okay, in this case, I can only join by some ID because this is why. The default is only show ID uh, ad attribute there. But you can also say, no, show everything. I, I know what I'm doing. So if I said address, I can put it on city and I can here took another city. So be the, be the, between the, uh, the contact and the account, they are in the same city and then like i said uh outer let me say the city and we should also add the name of uh, the account so we'll see what we have and then we run this and we see for instance that harry is in the ocean and he's working at the oil drilling company and we see that well there are two accounts that are in the ocean Right there. There's also Titan, Titanic. And also here in Tab, which is me. Uh, well, here, here is uh, Rap Solutions. They are in, in Tab, Tab. And we also see that me here, right here, I'm working right there. I think that's nice because this is something that's impossible to do when the UI you can find in the in the dynamics. And well, it's now a minute after 9 p.m. for me here in Stockholm. Uh, so I think that's all for me. And um, I should probably just say hi. Oh, let's do that. And I will 
desktop share so we can see each other. And if you yeah. have anything to say or do, then uh, please do. Thanks, Jonas. That was wonderful. Uh, and does anyone have any questions? I'd just like to say thank you so much. I I use this all the time, but a lot of those features I've not used and I didn't really know about. And to have you explain them has just been fantastic. Thank you. Glad to hear that. Because my goal is that everyone should learn something at least. Uh, Repository was something like that. Say, uh, I would like uh, to say thank you, Jonas, because the the fact XML Builder has really helped me out and gotten me out of some tough situations that I would not be able to figure out myself. So thank you for creating that tool. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Same. I yeah. use it like um, I, definitely every week and several days a week, right? Literally all the time. So thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Jonas. Yeah, and. Uh, Again, big shout out to Jonas for building this tool. I know, I mean, each each and every one, whether you are a developer, whether you are a functional consultant, you would need that tool, no matter what, where field, which field you are from. If you're working with Dataverse, if you're working with Power Platform, you're gonna work with that tool. So thanks, Jonas, for all the hard work. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you everyone for joining in. And uh, let me just take a screenshot here. Hold on. Uh, if anyone wants to go on camera, let's uh, let's take a screenshot here. And uh, okay, so three, two, one, go. Okay, let me take a screenshot. Ah, right, awesome. Thank you guys. This was fantastic. Yeah, take a picture. Okay. Uh, cool. Thank you, uh, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Danish. Thank Thanks, you all. Victor. Thank you, Danish. Thank you, Victor. Thank you. Thank you.